YouTube and FN True Wrestling followers, JC Styles, Brian Crazy, and we are here with our Monday Night Raw review of 131-2011, and uh, Raw was pretty good, so Brian, I'll hear the notes. Yeah, uh, Raw was pretty good. Joey was our official note keeper of the night, so I got little, the night off. <laughs> it was a little, it's a little rough, but I'll let you read that as a whole hey. segment. Sure, sounds good. Now, these are from the notes of JC. Definitely. Via Blackberry. Memo pad. We uh, upgraded to Michael Cole status. Well, no, Michael Cole status is still email. Nope. As, a, as a Matt He's Stryker, he said... As he got, Mike, a, message uh, yeah, on, he got as, a message on his Blackberry like two weeks ago. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> as of last night, he was still doing the computer. It's 2011, can he just BBM you? I think Matt Stryker said it best last night. Yeah. So, Yo, uh, I don't know why somebody, just to throw it in real quick, I don't know why so many people hated Matt Stryker. I mean, this guy was a school teacher. He used to take, like, six sick days so he could just try to learn the art of wrestling. Yeah, he might not be the, you know, the best wrestler out there, but he tried to, you know, just enjoy a business that he loved yes. and he was passionate about it. So, you know, leave your criticisms at fucking home. Insult Michael Cole, that piece of And then crap. also, also, while we're on that topic Shoot. of people hating on people, uh, don't leave fucking rude comments. I know I'm fat. I don't need to be reminded the that back I'm... To your desktop. Oh, I don't need to be remembered, reminded that I'm overweight. Okay, I'm just going to say this. I am the way I am. It's not a choice. It wasn't a choice. Okay, this was laid before me, so I'm going to walk it. For all you fuckers that want to leave retarded-ass comments, fat bastard, fat guy, uh, faggot, no lifers. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Brian's married, has three kids. That's a life. Joey I work a full time. I work a full time job. Sometimes they give me part time hours, but still, I have a job. In my spare time, I do videos. I hang out with my buddies all and right. my family. All Simple right, as it is, it's uh, just for all of you out there. This is after Raw. It's eleven o'clock at night. Now on a Monday night at eleven o'clock, uh, either you'd be hanging at home or going to sleep. Exactly. I mean, who the hell goes to the movies on Monday night? Who goes to the bar <coughs> on a Monday night? Who does? too much of anything on a Monday night and yeah if you sit at home and watch a WWE pay-per-view why not throw on the camera and talk about it afterwards we're chilling we're hanging out we're having a good time we're enjoying what we do and you know what to add to what JC said all the dumbasses out there you know like I told JC we're above them fucking ignore them dude you're my boy everything's good so let's move into Monday Night Raw there you go we're hopefully back this on go back to, hopefully it doesn't go back to the desktop oh that's fine uh, Raw goes on the air. Yes, Raw starts on the air. We saw uh, Alberto Del Rio come out, and uh, he is having kind of a celebration uh, for his Royal Rumble win the night before. He has mariachi dancers playing his theme music. He has Ricardo announce, which uh, I think Ricardo's fucking amusing as all hell. I, I don't know if everybody out there shares that, but... Um, and then, um, you know, he's talking about uh, who he's going to want to face at Wrestlemania. Either the WWE Champion, The Miz, or the World's Heavyweight Champion, uh, Edge, excuse me. And, um, you know, he was kind of, the way this angle was going, it kind of looked like he was leaning towards Miz heavily. Yeah. And then, at the last second, it kind of just goes towards Edge. But, you know, Del Rio is on SmackDown. I assume that, you know, that brand has, you know, a few amount of superstars. I assume that they weren't going to yeah. take another one away from it. Um, you just have to hit a button. Oh, there we go. The year's uh, it's a little different from the one I used before. Uh, then um, Alberto, you know, the way he kind of picks Edge is he goes into a discussion about how Edge has disrespected him, and well, the uh, Miz comes out first and then it says, yeah. well. I'm not your enemy, I'm not your, you know, I'm not here to pick a fight with you or jump you, but I'm here to tell you how it is, and that's pretty much what basically led into the decision by Alberto Del Rio, which gives a full description. <laughs> well, I saw the same show you did, but I mean, really, the, the segment between The Miz and uh, Alberto Del Rio wasn't really the pivotal build. I yeah. think the pivotal build was more focused around when Edge, uh, came, out. When Edge came out, exactly. And I mean, if that's, you know, the angle we're going at with the story, then I thought... Maybe that's kind of the way okay. we should cover. I, I don't know. And you really didn't, to be honest, you really didn't. The Miz part you just said, you didn't really have that much listed on the notes there. No. I'm following your format tonight, man. <laughs> well, still, so, I mean, basically the, Miz, notes. Da, da, da. basically the Miz comes out and says, I'm not your enemy. Um, 
But after you won the Royal Rumble last night, the Miz, uh, Edge was talking pure crap about him and and basically uh, so on and so forth. He was making fun of his accent, saying how he was terrible, how he's not a, a good wrestler. And that's pretty much when uh, <coughs> it came out. And <sighs> Studio malfunctioning. Yes, we uh, we are outside and the light is we on. We should go that way just a little bit. That way the light can pick you up. That might be a good idea. Perfect. <laughs> so, uh... Basically, you know, to, to finish off that segment, you know, we don't want to spend too much time on this. Alberto Del Rio versus Edge at WrestleMania. Um, I, g- I gave exact detail what oh happened yeah. at the last couple of seconds. Yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll cover that, no problem. And, uh... Alberto Del Rio says at WrestleMania he'll be the New World's Heavyweight Champion and hits Edge in the, uh, with a guitar. I mean, I guess... I think he's Edge the Mexican struck, Jeff Jarrett now? I think Edge kind of struck... Uh, Alberto first, yeah. and then he cleared the ring of Miz and Riley, and that's when he got hit with the guitar. I think. I don't know, Joey. This is just a little, because like, it's just like all like together. There's like I don't know. Here you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll go into the next segment. Um, pretty much, basically, set up the at the tag team title match. Uh, you had Co- Santino and Kozlov uh, go against Harris and Perfect Junior. Uh, pretty much, basically, this was actually a pretty decent contest. It, it wasn't was. the worst tag team match we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we kind of see um, Kozlov and uh, Santino pick up the win after uh, Santino hit a cobra on uh, Harris. Uh, it was just kind of weird. I guess that's what what it takes now is just a, a finger poke to win a match, pretty I much. I mean, dude, have you ever gotten hit in your jugular? Well, it's not really hitting him in the jugular. He's like hitting him in the side of the neck. It's not dude, really... Dude, if he... If if he really was hitting him in the jugular, I mean, come on, the force of four fingers into the jugular. Yeah, that that's gonna take a normal guy down, Joe. Uh, that's gonna take a normal guy down. We see a good match, but I know. happen to like Santino, so of course I'm gonna try to come at the most optimistic angle for him. I I'm glad they didn't. You know, it's not like I had that much of a problem with Husky or Mr. Perfect Junior. It's just that they've got the stupidest ring names in the world, and it's just hard to root behind a a superstar that just has a dumb name. I'm sorry. It's just... I I, I don't know. It's just me. I mean, if you're given a bad gimmick, it's... I know you do your best to work with it, but at the end of the day, it's still a bad gimmick. I mean, I I can't lie about it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Then we uh, have a uh, Orton come running out after uh, being that the uh, new Nexus kind of screwed Orton out of the uh, WWE title last night. Also uh, screwing him out of the Royal Rumble last night. Uh, comes out, hits an RKO on Harris uh, on McGillicuddy first, then Harris. Uh, then we kind of see Orton, you know, and uh, Harris just laying in the ring, and he kind of like. I never thought of him as Harris. I always thought of him as Husky. Uh, <laughs> So you see, he actually threw me off for a second. You kind of just see him there, and he's just looking down, and then he looks, then he just looks up, and you know what he's uh, contemplating. Uh, then he, you know, he looks like he's getting ready to walk in, and he goes and he puts himself in the corner, and he does a little viper. Uh, Then we see CM Punk come out and say, "Don't do it! Don't do it! You're going to regret it. If you if you do it, you're going to it's going to be serious uh, consequences and repercussions." And then pretty much basically just when you think Orton's not going to do it, he goes, just goes even viciously into the corner and then just punts him right in the friggin' skull, and I loved it. Beautiful. And Fucking beautiful. Where were they? Providence, Rhode Island? Providence, Rhode Island. And now you know what the they shit about it, guys? He kicked the pigskin pig for a field goal. That's the exactly what he the did. The shit about it is me and JC looked at tickets for the show, because Providence is only like an hour and 45 minutes away from here, and uh, not even, maybe an hour and a half at, at best. For upper it, deck, what was it? For 30 rows back, what was it, like $100 a ticket? Like a, almost close to $100 a ticket. And then, dude, if we wanted ringside, it would have been $400. But we would have been right on the barricade. But then again, but we, weren't, we weren't going through Ticketmaster. We were looking at StubHub, and yeah. StubHub usually charges more Ticket for their Ma- tickets. Ticketmaster didn't have anything in front of yeah. bro. $400, though? No. That's okay. I think you should be able to cut, cut, at least uh, read that or straight off. All right. I will read from JC's notes. Now, this was a uh, <coughs> statement that was prepared, but the wind seems to be blowing this way, so I'm going to switch sides with you. Why? Have a quick stare. No, this is a statement that was prepared by our general manager, Ted DiBiase, cuts a promo, and I quote, <laughs> <laughs> saying the King's career is over and needs to step aside for the future. And, he says, why don't you give your spot in tonight's Rumble 
to some other superstar. Cole says, you have met King is a legend and a Hall of Favor, and he is a scene stealer and won't give up his spot. Read it right, goddammit. I am reading exactly what you wrote. You don't gotta do it with the voice. Oh, okay. I thought our viewers might like the comic relief that I'm providing Sounds on tonight's like wrestling with your movie phone over here. <laughs> In a world. No. <laughs> you know Don LaFontaine? The guy that yeah. did, like, fucking... Didn't he night. die? He did die. Rest okay. in peace, Don LaFontaine. I loved your work. In a world. You know, he must have done that in about 9,000 trailers. It's cold. Come on, man. Okay, man. I think you went down too far. No, I'm right where you are. Okay. King says that I'm not giving my spot. Says that he's been in the Rumble and has been in the WWE 18 years and never has wrestled at WrestleMania. He's never had the opportunity. For you guys that don't know what King has hold, held over 150 championships. Not uh, one in the WWE. Not one in the WWE. That is correct. And um, and said that his road to WrestleMania starts uh, there tonight. Uh, Ted slaps the King and King goes after him. Ted pulls Maurice uh, in his way, kind of blocking him from the King attacking. Uh, Maurice then turns around, slaps Ted DiBiase in the face. That's when we see the King run over and bam, clocks him right in the fucking face. I mean, right boom. in the jaw. If you clean. watch the slow clean. motion, he laid him out clean, right in the jaw, man. It was awesome. I love it. <laughs> and um, we we go right into a video package. We go into uh, kind of this. We see this this cabin hut looking structure. Uh, it's got a couple windows that are illuminated. Uh, the whole sky is dark, and then we see rainy like a, and lightning. Yeah, and then we see a shadowy figure. Uh, I don't know. By the boots and the coat, kind of looks reminiscent to the Undertaker. I don't want to make any promises, but this might be a possible Undertaker return the night after Elimination Chamber. It would kind of fit the current storyline. They bring him back for a month of WrestleMania, and yeah. then he retires out. Uh, I think his in-ring career is really starting to. Uh, Lay down. I I think he has given the WWE many good years of his life, and it's just uh, yeah. So why don't you uh, give them the date uh, that the promo said? And, uh, the basically the date is dated for uh, February twenty second, two thousand eleven. Uh, basically, um, like Brian said, it was like a like a guy walking with a trench coat, black boots. It was in the rain, thunder, lightning. It definitely fit the Undertaker's mo. You had to say it, it did fit the Undertaker's mo, but I don't know if it is exactly the Undertaker. I mean, because the Undertaker's dead. I mean, if they were gonna do that, I could see it more fitting for like a uh, maybe him walking into like a crypt, you know, kind of thing, but not into like this like. Uh, ominous uh, cabin slash hut. Um, I think it would have been more fitting for like a graveyard scene. I think it might be somebody different, maybe somebody interesting. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying Undertaker isn't interesting, but I mean, like I said, I mean, it'd be probably fitting for someone that's return uh, coming, that's want, that's debuting because Undertaker really doesn't do the whole return package promo. He usually just picks out a wrestler that he wants to face at WrestleMania and just torments the shit out of him until like what? pretty much he shows up at. Uh, <laughs> A couple of weeks prior yeah, to WrestleMania. Yeah, pretty good on uh, his last return uh, when he first came. Yeah, but I mean, usually, like I said, they don't usually do the, the date packages. He usually just keeps, like, maybe they're trying playing to, mind games. Maybe they're trying something different this time around. Who knows? Maybe they're trying to, you know, uh, they saw the reaction they got as soon as it hit the net. I mean, honestly, I mean, guys, you, uh, everybody no out there. No Booker T and no, uh, no Diesel tonight. What was yeah, up with that? Yeah, and I mean, that that's what I was going to comment on. I mean, since it hit the, the information hit the net, we and JC did a short video on it, and we got thousands of views. I mean, it was uh, people, really caught people's interest that WWE brought these two guys in, and then they do not use them on tonight's show. Boston and Providence is so fucking hot, man. I don't understand why they weren't booked for tonight. Maybe maybe they're doing something over on SmackDown. Or maybe it I truly would think what, it would be better. I think what happens be, if it truly was a one-night deal? I don't know because Booker, I don't T, see was, that. Booker T was signed. He said he wants to be a commentator, though. So maybe that's going to take... Maybe they're going to get Cole off SmackDown finally. And maybe put Booker T in his spot. Dude, imagine... I can't see Booker T commenting. I can only see Booker T wrestling. I guess in a uh, a wrestling uh, interview he did uh, within you know the last several months... Uh, he spoke about how he would want to be a commentator. I don't see a WWE bringing him in as a commentator, though. But I just, mean, wouldn't that be a power team, though? Him and Stryker would ha- be happily decent. Yeah, but again, I'd rather... It, I mean, then bringing him back in the Royal Rumble just made no point then. I mean... 
Well, I don't think it made no point. I think uh, it's like you bring in any legendary superstar that's contributed a lot to the business. You gave him, you know, a minute to yeah, enjoy the bring, ring. Yeah, but you bring him to the ring just to have him be thrown out by the Nexus. I mean, yeah, I, no didn't, I didn't like uh, how Booker watched the Royal Rumble review if you want to hear uh, what we thought about that. But well, it's, I did it cold. I wanted to just yeah, keep going. But, I, but just to, to, to finish that one thought, I didn't like uh, how they booked Booker T in the Royal Rumble. I mean, yeah, Kevin Nash is, you know, as Diesel, his run was pretty damn decent. Yeah. You know, he got to clear house. He did okay. Booker T was in there for under a minute, and uh, he got a hell of a reaction by the crowd, and uh, I think it wasn't a uh, fitting of King Booker. So, moving on. Uh, we moved in. We came back from a commercial break after the video package uh, showing uh, Ted DiBiase uh, fighting, uh, wrestling against uh, Tyson Kidd. Uh, we see Daniel Bryan pick up the, uh, the, the the win using the lapel lock or the label lock. Um, then we kind of see this after-match segment with the Bellas, Gail Kim, and Daniel Bryan just breaking out into a brawl. And basically just kind of sees them... Uh, fighting in the ring and then it just cuts to a commercial break and that's pretty much the end of that segment and it was just like the match wasn't the match really wasn't all that great and I know Daniel Bryan could really have probably delivered uh, just, the, the, just the, the overall match I mean I guess Tyson Kidd just isn't a really good overall competitor I mean he put him in the ring against someone like Daniel Bryan and Daniel Bryan's just going to have to carry the whole friggin match it's just ridiculous I mean I think I don't like Tyson Kidd, to be honest, but I mean, he was trained in the Hart Family Dungeon, so I'm sure that he's got some wrestling ability, but when you put him in the ring with a career veteran like uh, Brian Danielson, or as you guys know him as Daniel Bryan in the WWE, um, like JC said, you're not going to see a match of the quality or caliber that we were expecting. Uh, and, you know, I kind of expected more out of Tyson. I was hoping that maybe he would have impressed us a little bit tonight. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there was just nothing. It, no. it just wasn't there. So, um... We move into the champion versus champion sure. match. We have champion versus champion. We see the world's heavyweight champion, Edge, go against the WWE champion, The Miz. Um... Now, me and Jay uh, were talking on the uh, Instant Messenger, you know, throughout this. And funny enough, he Miz used one. No. Two, not two, not three, not. But I think like five, five actual wrestling, wrestling holds. holds. Uh, and just wow, really, to be honest, just wow because it's just. I've never seen him use no, five wrestling holds in a I, row. And I think it was just because Edge's arm was hurt, so he think that thought that he had to go after the work the arm, which is really an amateur, a really amateur move. I mean, if you watch Beyond the Mat, the movie. Uh, there was a segment uh, with the guy, or I think it was in The Wrestler, where the guy had bruised ribs, and he's like, don't work the ribs, because y you work the ribs, every, you know, it, it's been done over and over, and I think that's what it is, it's like every time you see someone with an injury, they automatically go well, after the injury. They go after the weak spot, they're trying to pick up a win, and I mean, at the end of the day, a win is a win, so that's how they see it, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, you don't work the whole arm the whole match, though, I mean, is what, I, what people... Uh, back what, in the Remember back in the day? Remember how vicious people used to be, especially on Stone Cold's knee, especially The Rock? I mean, dude, you'd have a 30-minute match, and Rock would do nothing but purely fuck with that knee brace and just, like, torment Stone Cold's Yeah, but the thing was, it. though, those, those were two very talented athletes that <laughs> actually put the match over, that actually delivered on both dude, ends. Edge? Edge is a talented athlete. Miz is not. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. I mean... <laughs> Guys, he could be. I'm not saying... I'm not trying to put the kid down. I mean, he could be. It's just that he got pushed off with quick. I think there was a void, and they felt like he was the guy to fill it. But to be honest, I thought, you know what? I thought John Cena's mic promo was better than the Miz's. And that's... You know, I'm not a Cena mark by any means, but that's pretty sad when I actually was watching. I was like, yeah, that's actually kind of funny. But uh, we'll jump into that part right now. We, uh, we see Cena come out, and they've got kind of like the section of illuminated purple. You know, this was a complete and utter setup. Exactly. And, uh, you know, he's uh, getting all the fans to chant, Miz is awful. So they're all going, Miz is awful. And uh, Edge hits the spear and wins. So I guess on Monday Night Raw, the spear's not banned, but on Friday Night Smackdown, it is. I guess. I guess uh, they never said if it, w it was banned. I think she just said it was banned at the Rumble. She didn't, or until further notice. Well, who knows? Who cares? Exactly. Then we go into, uh, there was a tag team women's contest. Uh, we saw Team Laycool go against Italian Eve. Um, there were a couple of okay spots within the match. It was nothing really memorable. We saw Michelle McCool uh, hit, was it 
Uh, so she calls it the face lift? To Nata- yeah, she hit Natalia. No, E lift. In the face while she was up on the turnbuckle with Layla. Layla hit some sort of neck breaker combo thing. I didn't, to be honest, I really didn't even pay attention. She hit some sort of neck breaker combo thing, which looked okay. I mean, she, 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 uh, I she refuse to watch any Divas match until they bring Awesome Kong in. Uh, I thought I thought it was all right, and uh, we saw Team Lake Cool pick up the win, and man, they scurried fast before they got their asses kicked. But uh, it is fucking cold. It is you know we're expecting another uh, foot of snow on top of uh, guys. It's been record. We've gotten like over four feet here in Connecticut in one month. So um, moving on, we saw um, it was supposed to be a tag team contest. Uh, I'll let JC handle it. We um. We see a, well, it's supposed to be a tag team contest. Turned out to be a, a dance-off. Uh, at the end of the dance-off, we just see Kali beat the, Kali and Kaz, uh, Kali and Mark Henry beat the hell out of the Usos, and that was it. Well, yeah, it, they were in the ring, and uh, they were both facing off, and the Usos had this look in this eye, their eyes like they were about to do something. This is summing up real fast for the fans out there that didn't get a chance to see the show. And, uh, you know, because uh, I watched this guy, just real quick, I watched this guy's video, he left a comment out on ours, and he said, if you want a real review, now he goes into, like, all this utter detail in this horrible pay-per-view, and I mean, guys, if it narrated the detail, we would have gave it. Now, this was a good Monday Night Raw, so we're sitting here giving yes. detail. And, uh, you know, and plus, when we shot that video, we already made one that was 20 minutes and our equipment screwed up. So, you know, and we still threw another 13 minutes into it at, you know, after 11 o'clock at night. So, you know, just because we know there's people out there that... 13 minutes, that 13 minute video where we just talked about how we didn't like the pay Still got over a thousand, got over a thousand plus views. Almost two thousand so, views. Almost so, two thousand views. So we're not complaining. No, we're not. And you know what? It's it was our honest opinions. You know, we didn't. You know, we might have been a little quick with it, but it was our honest opinions. So basically, we see the the raw GM uh, send a message. You know, Cole. Where, excuse me, I got an email from an anonymous and uh, and uh, he goes, "All right, you guys are gonna face a dance off." Which, if it was Santino and Kozlov, it would have probably been funny because he's like the comic relief, but. So we see, you know, the Usos kind of can dance, I'm not going to lie. And Mark Henry and Kali, I don't know what the hell they were trying to do. And, um, you know, post-match, the Usos go after, like, the two biggest fucking guys in the WWE and get their asses handed to them, like JC said. Yeah. So then we move into the final segment of the night, and we're going to wrap this up. Uh, we have the uh, Royal Rumble, which was uh, the Royal Rumble. Which the Royal was, Rumble. Uh, John Morrison, Sheamus, King, R-Truth, John Cena, Randy Orton, and CM Punk. Uh, and we basically, we, it was a pretty decent mat. It was well, actually it was pretty good. Uh, we saw some really good parts on John Morrison. Uh, he was, I think, the, the third, uh, the fourth to the last to be eliminated. He was the first entry. He was the first entry, and he, you know, he did everything that he did at the Royal Rumble last night. You know, just amazing. You know, not trying to get eliminated. Um, when I seen him doing all this athletic stuff to stay in the ring, I was thinking, okay, they're probably gonna let him pick it up, which they didn't. Uh, the, the, the thing was, the winner of this faced the WWE Champion at Elimination Chamber, which was The Miz. And I'm guessing Raw's not doing an Elimination Chamber match. I guess only SmackDown's going to do the Elimination no, Chamber. No, I think they're going to... Uh, all the guys that were in... Uh, the, the set, there were seven guys in the Raw Rumble tonight. The one who won is going to face the WWE Champion in a traditional match at Elimination Chamber. So they're the going to have two Elimination Chambers, but one's only going to be a number one contender match. No, nope, they're both going to be the number one contender. There's going to be a SmackDown number one contender, and there's gonna, I believe there's going to be a SmackDown and a Raw number one contender. Then the winner of tonight's Raw Rumble is going to face the but WWE no, but Champion. What, what I'm trying to say is there would be no point in them having a number one contenders match for the Royal Rumble, I mean, for the for the WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, they already have so, Yeah, Del Rio picked edge. So I guess... I guess Raw's only having a WWE Championship match, and then they're going to have the number one contendership for the WWE Championship so, in this chamber. And I think they're probably going to have Edge defend the title in the Elimination Chamber. And that would be sick if we saw, like, Edge, Big Show. Well, you probably uh, know it's probably going to be Edge. It's probably going to be Ziggler. It's probably going it, to Obviously, it's going to be Edge, but it's probably going to be Ziggler, Big show. show, probably Barrett, uh, possibly maybe Ezekiel Jackson. Maybe Mason. But maybe it's kind of it's really early for Mason. No, Mason's on Raw. This oh, excuse on. me, excuse me. Yeah, 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 what am I thinking? What am I thinking? Um, and they'll probably probably throw someone in at the last minute for SmackDown. Um, After 11 o'clock at night. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe th- this would be a way to put Kevin Nash, or a.k.a. Diesel, into it, because Bears probably, will probably make the, the, the Elimination Chamber. Yeah, Joey did a video on it. Uh, Kevin Nash did some shoot interviews. I like Kevin Nash. 
Uh, JC thinks you know some of his actions have been a little controversial in the business. We're not going to really go into it. You can watch the JC's Diesel. Video. Ca- I think I was a little o- I think I was a little over dramatic when I did that video. Um, I mean, I res- I don't respect what he did in TNA in the, the last year he was there. The last couple of months he was there, uh, just basically being all about the money and not about the fans. Um, but anything prior to that, I mean, like WWF, WCW, when he was Diesel, then went over to uh, WCW and was Big Sexy Kevin Nash and part of the NWI. I like just the last couple of years, maybe the last two years of TNA. I really didn't I don't like. No, I thought about. at the end of his TNA run, he was fantastic. You know, it was. But know, the thing is, though, he was, was too. He was too much about the money and not about the the, the, the company and the and the wrestling. And I the mean, fans. backstage, I heard that Kevin Nash was really cool. I think that, you know, they made such a good portrayal of him on screen as being that heel that it, you know, cemented itself into so many people. But the Royal Rumble, the uh, Royal Rumble. Seen, uh, Jerry the King Lawler pick up the victory. Yes, he is going to face the Miz at Elimination Chamber. Oh my obviously fucking he's, god. Uh, obviously, Edge is, uh, I mean, obviously he's not going to go. I think he is. To WrestleMania. Like, he's not going to go to WrestleMania, but dude, be honest. Since the Miz has had all these different opponents for the WWE Championship, who's he had the best match with? King. The King. And I think Vince McMahon finally saw it. Wow. I'm going on my prediction on 131, 2011. It's about three weeks away, but the Elimination Chamber, I'm picking for Raw. If he's in it, it's going to be John Morrison. Because cause we know that the Miz is going to retain the title over the King. So what, what better way to push uh, push John Morrison to have him wrestle at John uh, Miz at WrestleMania? Hey, you know, crazier things have happened, but maybe they would let King pick it up for just the one night. I mean, shit, we saw King champion for 24 hours, so. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, you, you try to be hopeful in some things. You know, you'd like to see these, I do like, not want to see Orton at Mania in the main event. I do not. I've see, We've seen it the last two I years. I thought we were close to seeing John Cena. Yeah, I don't want to even see that. I don't want to see... Anyone who's been in the main event at WrestleMania, I don't want to see them. I want to see fresh faces in the main event this year. It's cool that it's cool that it's the biggest stage of them all, but you're using the biggest stage of them all just to further more careers that have already been pushed so big. No, I think this is going to be Alberto Del Rio's time to shine, and I think they need to push him they properly. Need to push over the next... too. Exactly, I think Morrison deserves it. Morrison is at WrestleMania. <laughs> Excuse me, because the hiccups would be awesome. Um, but yeah, basically, you know, to sum it up, no Booker T, no Diesel tonight, Jerry the King Lawler is number one contender, and, uh, pretty much the Santino and Kozlov held on to their titles, and, um... I think this is a wrap for the Raw review tonight. Yeah, I really think it is. I'm tired of freezing my ass off. Yeah, and my hands are cold. I feel I like am. my skin's cracking. My shit's like pink. But, uh, you guys have a, uh, a great night. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and we'll see you, uh... Thursday night for, uh, Impact. Sure will.